Hey everyone, this is Paul with RC Foam Fighters. Okay, this is going to be another video on a project that I'm starting to work on. Uh, basically, Frank and I had a little bit of downtime, uh, but now we're starting to get back into it and uh, hopefully getting back to more projects uh, in the coming weeks. So, let's take a look at this new project that I started a little while ago, and uh, actually I'm starting to gear up and uh, get back onto it. Okay guys, I decided I was going to get started on my next project. And uh, basically what I wanted to do, <laughs> I guess, was complete the trilogy. Uh, I've made the regular Nova Jet, I made the Supernova, and now I'm going to be making the Supernova Extreme. And basically, here, this is a view of the uh, Supernova here. It's got a 34 inch wingspan. And basically, uh, my plan is to build a plane that's a little bit bigger. I'm going to be going up to a 38 inch wingspan. But I'm going to be uh, using a lot bigger uh, power system on there. There's a couple of power systems I have in mind. I'm not totally sure which one I'm going to use yet. But we're uh, definitely going to be using more than 1500 watts. That um, is on this plane. So let's get started on the project and see how it goes. Okay guys, as I did mention, the uh, Supernova was a 34 inch wingspan. This plane is going to be a 38 inch wingspan. Basically I am going to build it to the biggest size that I could fit on one sheet of foam here. Uh, basically you can see the two halves of the plane I have already cut out. Um, when put together, the leak will uh, 38 inch wingspan. And for this one I'm going to be changing it up a little bit. On the Supernova and the regular Nova Jet, I use 30 millimeter EPP foam for the main wing. On this one, I'm only going to be using uh, 15 millimeter, so I'm going to be using a thinner wing, hoping to um, cause a little less drag and maybe get a little bit higher speeds out of it. So um, basically, that's the plan. Let's uh, get on to building it. Okay, guys, here's kind of a rough look at what the Supernova Extreme is going to look like. Um, basically, it uh, looks like Patrick from SpongeBob. <laughs> now, actually, though, um, it's a little over to what the uh, yardstick is here. See, that's 36 inch yardstick. So it'll be 38 inch wingspan. So let me glue this uh, together, the two halves. Now I'm going to be uh, shaping the leading edges and all the way around the wing. Um, actually, I might do that before I glue it together. So let me get started on that and we'll uh, take a look at it when it's done. Okay, guys, as you can see, I started marking all the bevel lines that are going to be uh, using to shape the wing. And it's a good idea to mark all the edges even on the uh, try and mark the middle of the side of the foam so it'll give you a good idea when you start doing the beveling of where the middle is you know so you can uh, basically get these bevels as even as possible um, I'm going to be doing it all by hand so there probably will be a little bit of variance but I'm going to do my best to get it as nice and close and even and symmetrical as I can so now that I got those marked I'll probably be using a hot wire a handheld hot wire cutter to kind of shave it off in a rough edge and after I get it shaved off in a rough edge, I'll be using a sanding block to sand it down and get it to the shape that I want and uh, hopefully as even as possible. Okay guys, I've been doing most of the bevel cuts. I've been using this um, battery operated hot wire cutter. It's a real simple uh, cutter. You can usually get these at um, some of the craft stores like Michael's or some of the other ones or you can even find it online. Um, I believe we do have a link to uh, one of these or something similar on our uh, blog. So if you're looking for something like that and can't find it, take a look at the blog. Um, but basically, I use that to go around all the areas where I marked for the bevel cuts. I cut that off with a hot wire cutter. Um, it's a real rough edge. And then I'm going to come back with a sanding block to smooth it out and get it all even and shaped the way I wanted. One of the harder areas is right here in the corner where the main wing meets the uh, rear wing. Um, you can't really get in there with the hot wire cutter. So I'm probably going to have to use a knife and a sanding block to get that shaped the way I wanted. So I'll continue on with that. Uh, one note, guys, though, if you are using one of these hot wire cutters, use some sort of mask and I recommend getting one you know something similar to this that has the charcoal filters in there because some of these fumes coming out of this uh, foam when you're cutting it I believe is pretty toxic so um, you know if anything else at least make sure you ventilate your area super good and get the smoke blown away from you so you don't breathe it in okay guys let me continue on and uh, we'll get back with the video after I get it better shaped okay guys got all the bevels pretty much done um, they're all shaped and rounded pretty much the way I want um, I did my best to get them as symmetrical as possible. Um, this airplane is going to be featuring pretty much a symmetrical airfoil, meaning that's going to have the same curve on the top side as the bottom side. So that's pretty much um, going around the edges. The bevels were the same size on the top and bottom. So uh, to do that, I basically used um, a rasp to kind of do a rough edges and also the um, hot wire cutter. And then after that, I came back and smoothed it out with the sanding block. So I got that all ready. Now I'm going to be gluing the two halves of the plane together. Now after I get it glued together, I'll probably be uh, starting to work on putting some uh, fiberglass weave on it 
and uh, making the plane stronger. So let's get to that and uh, see how it goes. Okay guys, got the two halves of the airplane all glued together and what I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to put a carbon fiber aero shaft inside the airplane. Uh, basically what I used is my Weller hot knife tool. I took off the usual tip and I just put a, um, a screw into the end of it. This works really nice because it kind of creates like a rounded hole that's kind of circular inside and then it closes up a little bit at the top so it helps hold it in nice and good. Um, and actually what I'm using, I'm going to be using uh, real carbon fiber aero shafts. I picked these up at Walmart at the end of hunting season. I think they're only like $1.50 each on clearance. Um, but they're carbon fiber and they're just wrapped in like a decorative camouflage. But I ain't too worried about that because this is all going to be covered up with the, the fiberglass weave and tape and everything else uh, once the plane's done and you won't even be able to see it. Um, but it's a good cheap way to put some uh, carbon in your airplane. So let me uh, get to installing that. I'm going to epoxy it in here and then uh, we'll move on. Okay guys, I got the uh, main carbon fiber aero shaft ready to put in and I decided I was going to put a second shorter one up towards the front of the main wing um, to also help make this a little more stiffer because um, this plane is going to be quite heavy so I just want to make the wing as rigid as possible. So I'm going to put those in and then after that I'll be going to the uh, fiberglass um, with epoxy on it to make it a lot stiffer. Okay guys, I got the uh, second smaller spar mounted into the uh, near the front of the uh, main wing here. And now what I'm doing is I'm cutting out some of this Henry style weave. It's a fiberglass weave um, that's resin coated. And I'm basically going to be um, covering the whole main wing. Now I'm going to be using some uh, finishing epoxy and epoxy this down. It's going to be kind of like an epoxy glass um, main wing pretty much. I want it to be real rigid. So I'm not going to be using the uh, 3M90 on this plane. So I'm going to be using the epoxy so it's more rigid. It's going to have less give. But I think it's not going to matter with the speeds of this plane. I'm hoping it'll go. So if it crashes, I don't think the regular stuff will hold up. So we're just going to make it nice and stiff and rigid and uh, see how the wing turns out. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've got most of the fiberglass kind of cut out. And I tacked it down with a hot glue gun just in a few specific places to hold it kind of in place. And now I'm going to be using the 20-minute um, finishing epoxy. This is going to... Mix a bunch of it, now I'm going to put it down and uh, push it all over the fiberglass weave on top of the foam with this little putty knife here and try and get it as thinned out as possible um, so it'll be as light as possible but that should tack it all down real good to the foam and when it dries this thing should be nice and stiff pretty much like a surfboard when it's done so uh, let me get started with that and then uh, we'll take a look at it after I get it finished okay guys I got this main wing portion of the Supernova Extreme uh, pretty much all laid out with the uh, fiberglass weave and the epoxy on top so it's pretty much like a nice hard epoxy glass um, main wing so it seems like it's gotten pretty rigid um, I might have to reapply a little bit more of the epoxy I do have a few little bubbles here it's not totally smooth like I wanted so I might have to apply a little bit more on here um, to get the finish the way I want and then after that we'll uh, start building the plane I've got to cut out the other uh, fuselage piece that's going to go on top and this time I'm going to be using the 30 millimeter on the uh, fuselage piece so it'll be a little taller on top and make room for the bigger batters that are going to be running. So um, that's probably where we're going to finish up on the build portion of the video this week. Um, but let's take a look at some of the electronics I'm thinking about putting on this plane. Okay guys, I just want to show you some of the electronics that I'm thinking about using on this uh, Supernova Extreme yet. I'm not totally sure which one I'm going to use. Um, but basically just to give you a comparison, this is the uh, motor that I used on the last Supernova, the 3648 by a 1450 kV motor. This motor roughly puts out about 1500 watts or roughly about a little over 2 horsepower. I think a horsepower is a little over 700 watts um, basically. Uh, but I'm hoping to basically double the power. Um, I've got three motors that I'm going to be thinking about using. I'm going to test them out and see which one gives the best performance. Uh, but all three of these motors are helicopter motors for 600 size helicopters. And they're all rated at um, 3000 watts or even a little above. Um, the three motors are basically I've got the, two of these Turnigy motors here, this uh, T600 motors. One of them is 1100 kV motor. I um, might try this motor with the 6 cell uh, lipo pack. Um, I still got to determine what prop, but I'm hoping a 8 inch with a high pitch, um, probably 8x8 or 8x9 or something like that. Um, I got to see what the uh, motor will turn on 6S, and um, I'll be doing some testing of that coming up in future videos. Um, the sec second option I'm thinking about running is also a T600 motor. But this motor is rated at 1400 kV, so I may be running that only on a 5S pack, uh, depending on what side prop again I can run on that. Um, the third option 
that I'm thinking about running is uh, one of these other motors. It's a Turnigy, um, what is it, H3740 1760 kV motor. So, this is definitely a higher kV motor, um, but the outer diameter of the motor is a little bit smaller than the T600 motor, so it might have a little bit less torque. And um, I'm not sure what the amps are going to be pulling on the different size props I'm going to be running. Um, but basically, the, uh, it's going to be one of those three motors that I think I'm going to be running on this uh, Supernova Extreme. So um, that should put out roughly about 3,000 watts. So that's going to be double the power of the old motor on the Supernova. So that's roughly, what, a little over four horsepower. <laughs> so it should be pretty crazy if this thing actually flies. I'm not sure how heavy it's going to be. Um, like I said, I did increase the wing area from 34 inches to a 38 inches on this uh, Supernova Extreme. And so it should have a little bit more wing area. But actually, since the wing is thinner uh, from 15 or 30 millimeters down to 15 millimeters, It'll provi probably uh, provide a little bit less lift. Um, so that's kind of the basics of the motors that I'm going to be running. Um, I got a couple ESCs that I'm going to be probably running. Um, either the 150 watt or 150 amp Turnigy um, um, ESC here, or either the uh, um, low budget um, Hobby King uh, 190 amp um, ESC, and which Frank actually tested and it did run. All the way up, I think he had it pretty close to uh, 190 uh, amps when he was doing the testing for Hobby King. Um, so I've got to be uh, testing those out in the future. Uh, I did uh, build a new motor stand. I don't know if you guys seen it on my Hobby King reviews channel. Uh, we were using this. Uh, basically, I built this to be start testing these crazy motors like uh, the ones I'm going to be using on the Supernova Extreme. So it's got a you know a little plexiglass shield that we can hide behind if that thing uh, decides to grenade on us. Um, but basically. Um, I was using the Turnigy 130 amp watt and amp meter, but uh, me, Frank and I actually uh, burned one of those up because we're pulling too many amps on the burst. So I've got to be uh, hooking up a separate um, amp meter that I got. So let's take a look at that. Okay, guys, uh, something to look forward to in the future. Um, like I said, I'm going to be testing um, some of these bigger, crazier motors, um, possibly over 130 amps um, with this uh, Turnigy watt and amp meters uh, rated at. So what I did is I purchased um, something off of eBay. This is a uh, amp and voltage meter. It's uh, basically supposed to be for like electric cars and stuff like that. It's rated up to 200 amps um, DC and up to 200 volts DC. Um, it has a 200 amp shunt, uh, basically, so that'll allow up to 200 amps of current to go through it um, before it blows out. So um, since this does display amps and voltage, we should be able to calculate watts. Um, watts are basically amps times volts. So um, we're going to run up those motors to see what type of crazy amps and uh, volts they're pulling. Then we can calculate that out to see what type of watts we're pulling also when I start testing. So look forward to that coming up in the future. Um, like I said, i got to build probably a little box over here on the side of this uh, motor tester. And then uh, once we get all hooked up, we can start testing uh, props, motors, and batteries to see what the best combination is for the Supernova Extreme. Okay, last, I'm um, just kind of show you with the batteries um, that I've been um, purchasing to kind of get ready for uh, the Supernova Extreme. Uh, basically, on the regular Supernova, we were using the 2650 uh, 5S pack. So, uh, for the Supernova Extreme, uh, we're going to be going up to a 4000 milliamp pack. It's quite a bit bigger, uh, quite a bit heavier. Um, this one's rated at, was it 4590C? It's one of the Nanotech batteries. So, this is only a 5S pack. Um, for the 1100 kV motor, I might be running a 6S. This one is only rated at, what, 3040C, so I might have to get a um, higher rated battery than this, depending on what that motor pulls. But uh, that's kind of a quick look at some of the electronics we're going to be running on the Supernova Extreme. So uh, stay tuned, guys. Uh, we'll see how this works. Hopefully it flies once I get it built. Uh, so look forward to it in the coming weeks. Okay, guys, I've pretty much finished up part one of the Supernova Jet Extreme. Uh, basically, this is the start of the end of the trilogy, like I said at the very beginning. Uh, we had the Nova Jet that uh, flew all the way up to 112 miles an hour on a uh, Grayson Hobby Super Mega Jet. And after that, I went to the Supernova Jet with the uh, 1500 watt motor. We had that all the way up to 143 miles an hour. So now we're building the Supernova Jet Extreme. Not sure how fast it's going to be. Might not even be much faster than the uh, Supernova Jet. But let's get it built and see what happens. Uh, maybe it'll be a cool play. Maybe it'll be faster. Who knows? Uh, it should be exciting to see. So stay tuned. I'm going to be working on this plane in the future and hopefully get it out flying at Herman Airport in the coming weeks.